Welcome to Wisdom Wednesday's Consciousness Teachings. And before I start today's transmission, I invite you to subscribe to my channel and share it with your loved ones. And also hit the bell notification so that you're notified for Monday's meditations, Wednesday's wisdom teachings, and free Friday's other teachings into consciousness, reality transurfing, and various other tools. So today I'd like to talk to you about the importance of having a self-realized master as your teacher called in India a guru. Guru means darkness and ru means light. And simply what a guru does is takes on your darkness to guide you towards the light. And I'd like to do an honoring at the end of this um, video to my guru, Shri Amritananda Natha, who, and I'd like to speak the Guru Studi, which is an honoring to the Guru. And so today's transmission took me into the inner workings of the mind. And can anything really be known without the mind, without a thought? And quite frankly, where is the consciousness? Because where there is consciousness, surely the mind must be there to know the consciousness. Because the mind transmits the language of consciousness into a thought. But then when we go more into the Advaita teachings of I'm not this body, and I am just pure consciousness, we realize that consciousness is prior to the mind. And so the feeling that I am is called consciousness. Tattvam asi, I am that I am. And let's hold on to that for a little while. You see, the mind, it won't go away. But you can begin to observe what you are, to go behind the mind. So don't even ask the mind anything. Just sit as the detached observer and allow the mind to just be. You see, you have to start to really, really convince yourself that you are not the mind. I am not this body. I am a soul. And you can say that you flow with the mind, but have you ever seen the flow within the consciousness? And this is where the importance of being initiated by a guru comes in. Because a guru is the only person that can take you from your Agya Chakra, which is your third eye chakra, to your crown and beyond. And when you are facing any difficulty in your life, to speak and chant the Guru Paduka Mantra allows the difficulty and the karmic energetic attachments related to this difficulty to pass away. But there should be the conviction that I, myself, is my closest friend and ally, my guru. Because when you truly realize your guru, you realize that you and your guru are one. And when you then start to engage your mind in the devotion to the self, you are completely surrendering to your guru, to his feet, as a devotion to yourself. And this allows you to be friends with the self. 
You see, the mind will tend to run from here and there. But in order to direct it towards the self, your true consciousness, to speak and chant the Guru Mantra is prescribed as the best medicine. And only when the mind and the self mingle into one can you go into higher states of Samadhi, Unity Consciousness, Oneness with the Self. And that is the realization of the Guru within Self. The mind is simply the language that we use for the external world. The mind is action. And the more we start to investigate and seek the self, the purer the mind will be. And the prescribed medicine for this is certainly the Guru Paduka Mantra. Paduka meaning the Guru's feet. His left foot is the Shakti consciousness, the feminine. And his right foot is the Shiva consciousness, the masculine. And when you are surrendering everything to the Guru's feet, you are surrendering to the wholeness of the self, of the masculine and the feminine within yourself. And I'm not saying that one should forget the body consciousness and keep the mind busy with the mantra. Just focus your attention on your true nature and use this sacred mantra that only one can be initiated into to guide you into higher states of consciousness. So long as the mind recognizes itself as a body, it will not be controlled. Your Tattva Masi, the sense of I am that I am, is the self that you really do have. And so who really tells the mind what to do? It is the self. And slowly you will realize that you are spaciousness. You have no form and no shape. And only then the mind will come under control because you've merged and melted into the self, the guru within. Shining white light, pure white light, just like a diamond, may be seen within your inner realms, within your inner consciousness. In the sacred scriptures, this is called the subtle body. Very few have a vision of this subtle body. It is a sign of a self-realized being. And it is with the power of this light, the light switch almost, that your body operates. This is your soul light. And to remain without the body consciousness and just be in your inner consciousness as a soul is the greatest wealth. If you're sleepless, as long as you're thought free, you will get the same rest. And so constant, constantly contemplating on the self is exclusion of any other activity. And the Guru Mantra allows you to do this. You may not be able to contemplate on the self whilst doing your daily work. But this is when the inner chanting of the Guru Mantra comes in, constantly within. When working, of course you pay attention to your work. And then, as soon as you get a free moment, start embracing the self. When you're quiet, do not give attention to other thoughts, just to yourself. And I have been very fortunate to be blessed with the sacred Guru Paduka Mantra. 
as an initiation. You see, consciousness has to concentrate on consciousness. And whilst meditating, if you come to know someone's past, present or future, you don't need to talk about it. When the knowledge of the self is established, it will know automatically how to conduct itself in the world. Spiritual seekers of the self should not have any rules or laws because these rules are quite stringent and really for those who are anxious for the outer objective pleasures. And I know that the mind is difficult to control and this is the reason why if we don't give attention to the mind and switch our attention to our inner self, we start to connect more and more inwards to our true inner nature. Because at the end of the day, we come from nature and we will return to nature. And so it's important to leave aside any labels that you're putting on yourself, your name, your job, your address, the roles that you play, the masks that you wear. Instead, turn your attention to the self, the inner self. Can you tell me something about your inner self and the qualities that it has? Soon you will realize that you will only go back to the silence of this being. This is the state prior to consciousness. This is the state of your true self. But we need the human body to realize that, to experience that inner state, the para brahma state. But what I'm asking you today is to not forget the luminous self, the true self. And of course, carry on with your daily work, but do not forget your true nature. Getting too involved with body consciousness doesn't give us enough time to recite the Guru Mantra or to meditate with it. And we start to forget our true nature, our true Paramatma, the Super Soul, because we're too busy entertaining the external life. And whatever you give attention to manifests. And so I urge you to give up identification with that body consciousness for a little while. And you will see that you will start to connect more and more so with your inner light and find the truth of your beingness. To remember yourself, your true self, without words, is to mingle the self with the self. That means the smaller self with the bigger self. The body consciousness is really the egoic self and it won't go away. But the self, the true self, is the vital force of all the five elements, earth, air, fire, water, ether, known in the mantra, na, ma, shi, va, ya. And the power of self-realization is such that millions of people will then fall at the feet of a jnani, a self-realized being, the guru, the one who is able to initiate you into the guru mantra.
Knowing the inner self, one gets to know the true knowledge. But you're not the body, but you're a form of light. And eventually, the body consciousness becomes like that of Brahman. And your conviction should be for attaining your true nature because we are true nature. There is only the self, the self, the shining light. And after getting self-realization, there will not even remain a single thought of death because you are eternal and you're an infinite being. So I'd like to share with you today an important honoring to my guru or whoever is your guru and it is called the Guru Stuti. And just listen to the energetic transmission of the Guru Stuti and close your eyes and sit with a straight back and just receive. Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Thank you, thank you, thank you. Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Akhanda Mandala Akaram Vyaktam Yena Characharam Tatparam darshitam yena tasme shri guru veena maha Agyanatti mirandasya gyanan jushalakaya Chakshurum nilitham yena tasme shri guru veena maha Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Dev, O Maheshwaraha, Guru Sakshat Param Brahma, Tasme Shri Guru Vainamaha, Stavaram Janganam Vyaktam, Yatkin Chitsaka Chakaram, Tatpadam Darshitam Yena, Tasme Shri Guru Veena Maha Nityanandam Vyapi Yatsvaram Trelokyam Sakarachakaram Tatparam Darshitam Yena Tasme Shri Guru Veena Maha Sarvashruti Shiro Ratna Virajita Padambuja Vedantam Bhuja Suryoya Tasme Shri Guru Vainamaha Chaitanya Shashvatam Shantam Vyomatitam Niranjanam Nadabindu Kalatitam Tasme Shri Guru Vainamaha Jnana Shakti Samaruda Tattva Mala Vibhushitaha Bhukti Mukti Pradata Cha Tasme Shri Guru Vainamaha Anekha Janma Samprapta Karma Bandha Vidahine Atma Jnana Pradarena Tasme Shri Guru Vainamaha Soshanam bhavasi nidoshaka gyanapanam sarasham pada Guru pado dakam samyak tasme shri guru vena maha Na guru radikam tatvam na guru radikam tapaha Tatva gyana param nasti tasme shri guru vena maha Manatha shri jagnatha madguru shri jagat guru 
गगन सदृश तत्वाचल साक्षिभूत ध्यान मूल सर्व 